surely by now you've seen this painting that somebody did uh, of Donald Trump with all, a bunch of past Republican presidents that, is, uh, that he liked so much he hung it in the White House. You, I swear, if you haven't seen this, go Google while you're listening to me right now. Go, go Google this painting and take a look at it. It's, uh, it's an, let's, let us say, an idealized Donald Trump sitting with, uh, let's see, uh, Jerry Ford, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. I'm not sure who that is in the background there. Nixon, uh, Eisenhower, all, all the guys, basically. And uh, it looks, it has all the, the qualities of uh, that famous painting of poker playing dogs, uh, except it is wine drinking, except in Trump's case, Coca-Cola drinking Republican presidents. Uh, I like the well, poker playing dogs better, actually, both aesthetically and as a political statement. But uh, it is, there's a certain commonality between the poker playing dogs and the Republican president paintings, which is, in both cases, it shows uh, beings gathered for purposes to which they are not naturally suited or inclined, I would say. Secondly, um, both look like they were painted on black velvet, uh, which they might have been. I don't know. Like those pictures you used to see of Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson, if you ever drove around the South in the 90s. Uh, People would sell them by the roadside, also on black velvet. Um, now, that said, the artist who created this painting uh, says that, uh, you know, he's also done one of Democratic presidents, and he also points out, he says that every single Republican president is in there, even though only, only a few are featured because there's like a murky crowd in the back. He says they're all there. And he also points out that there is a woman sort of approaching from the distance, and he says that's the first Republican woman president who has yet to be elected. So she is the ghost of Republican presidents yet to come, and as good as it would be to have a woman president, I don't know how many more Republican presidents this country can stand, but I'll tell you, it's not much, and as I look at this, uh, list, the, the, the ones we can see here, the Republican presidents we can see here, it is a bunch of bad hombres, to use uh, uh, Trump's own phrasing. Uh, well, look, look we'll, we'll cut Jerry Ford some slack and say he was just kind of a doofus more than anything else. By today's standards, both Ford and Eisenhower are actually very liberal Republicans. In fact, if Eisenhower were running for political office today, he'd kind of be pretty close to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in his politics because he wanted to expand. You know, If you read the 1956 Republican Party platform, it's actually pretty good. I mean, it's not it's not nearly what we would want today, but Eisenhower talks about, brags about expanding the number of people on Social Security. He brags about expanding the number, number of working people who belong to unions. And of course, he built the federal highway system, a massive infrastructure project. So, uh, okay, I'm going to give Eisenhower a pass. Jerry Ford, well, you know, he supported the Equal Rights Amendment, so he wasn't all bad. But the rest of these guys, and of course, Abraham Lincoln, he's in here, but he's not a Republican in the sense of the modern Republican Party at all. Modern Republican Party it was racist way before Trump. Nixon ran a racist campaign. Uh, uh, Re Reagan ran a racist campaign, in fact, announced him, his, officially his candidacy in Philadelphia, Missouri, um, Philadelphia, Missouri. Mississippi, a tiny town known only uh, in, in wider circles for being the place where three civil rights workers were murdered. So that was racist code, coded message. Uh, George Bush Sr. had his uh, racist Willie Horton ad and so on. Uh, Nixon was Nixon's, need I say more. So these were not good people. This is not a good party. And this is the message I keep trying to say over and over again. Trump is uniquely bad, but he's not bad in an unexpected way. He is the logical extension of the horrible impulses towards, uh, that his party has held for decades toward racism, racial appeals, anti-immigrant appeals, uh, appeals to uh, rejection of the other, appeals to tear up the social contract, to not care for the poor, to not care for the sick, to not care for the least among us. And for that reason, the entire party has to go the way of the poker playing dogs.